Chianti Classico is one of my favorite wines, and it offers absurd value for money. I'm going to talk all about that and show you three wines. That's all coming up. Hello, hello, hello! <laughs> Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel, and I am passionate about the subject today. I'm really excited. I, I'm looking forward to tasting these wines. I'm so excited because I'm talking about Sangiovese, and in particular, Sangiovese from Chianti Classico. Chianti Classico is a region in the heart of Tuscany. I think the wines are absolutely fabulous. You can get some real bargains there, like we have right here in front of us. All of these wines are under $25 worldwide, with two of them under $20. Chianti Classico is different from Chianti. Chianti is a zone in the center of Tuscany. There's eight subzones, and Chianti Classico is a subzone right in the center. Chianti Classicos are considered to be the highest quality wines in all of Chianti, although there are some stellar wines being made in other subzones as well. If you want to know that you're buying Chianti Classico, you just got to look for the rooster symbol. That will ensure that you're buying a Chianti Classico, not a regular Chianti. You also have to know there's three different levels of Chianti Classico. There's Anata, just the basic Chianti Classico that needs to be aged for 12 months after the harvest before it's released. Chianti Classico Reserva that needs to be aged for 24 months after harvest. And then Gran Selezione, which needs to be aged at least 30 months after the harvest. And there's stricter standards. Chianti Classico is trying to position that as like a Grand Cru type of wine. But today we're tasting three Chianti Classico Anata, or the basic level. And this is where I think you can find real value. And sometimes the wines are better than Reservas or Gran Selecciones that can be a little bit too oaky at times. In the past, Chiantis did allow the inclusion of white grapes in the blend. That's no longer the case. Wines have to be 80% Sangiovese. Some local grapes like Cagnaiolo, uh, Colorino. You can also add Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon into the blend as well. I think Bordeaux and Chianti Classico are two examples of historic fine wine regions where you can get some great wines at blockbuster prices. Chianti Classico is right in the center of Tuscany, and the vineyards are actually quite high. 210 meters up to 600 meters above sea level means they go up to 2,000 feet. I've been there before. It really feels alpine. It's quite green. You, you feel the cool mountain air. It's really a magical place. A lot of hidden, quasi-abandoned villages. There's a reason that a lot of people want to go to Tuscany for holiday. There are so many excellent producers. I only have three right here to show you. I always like to try different Chianti Classicos when I see a producer I'm not familiar with because it's just a style that I like. You want to think of these wines being a little bit more medium bodied, high acidity. They have some nice firm tannins, but it's the sour cherry that just gets me every single time. This is a style of wine that I've enjoyed for a long time, and as my palate has changed, I've never really gotten sick of it. The cool thing is these wines can be had at sometimes under 20 bucks, and they're age-worthy as well. I remember I bought a case of Monsanto Chianti Classico Reserva for 17 bucks a bottle. Still have it lying down in my cellar back in the U.S., still drinking great. Let's get into these wines. I'm excited. I have tasted two of these wines before, but not this vintage, and then one is brand new to me, so let's get started. First up, Montero Tondo. This is the Chianti Classico, Vigna Valialata. This is a small producer, high elevation, in the village of Gaioli and Chianti. In Chianti Classico, there are, there are several different villages. They each have their own microclimates as well, which makes the wines interesting. I was there before, it was really high, but it was a steep climb up to the vineyard by car. I'm excited. I tasted the last couple vintages of this, not the 2017. This is the current release. As you can see, we're going to have 2017, 18, 19. So for Chianti Classico, the wines must be aged for at least 12 months after the harvest, although some producers hold the wines back a little bit more to get more bottle aged like this one. This is a cute husband-wife team. Really, really like them. Let's get into this. I'm super excited. I know this is mostly Sangiovese. This has some Cagnaiolo. I think it has some Malvasia Nera in it as well. First of all, true Sangiovese color. Not so dark. I can see my fingers through it. You can't drink color. Wow. Sour cherry for days, red raspberry, earth, cedar, incredibly complex. I've seen this wine, I think, in the U.S. for around 18 bucks, which I think is a steal. Fall leaves, good Chianti Classicos can really start to resemble Pinot Noir in a certain way. If you like those earthy notes, more of those red fruit driven type of flavors, which I like. A little bit of floral note. Mm. Chianti Classico to a T. Me and body to tans are a little bit firmer. But Sangiovese, especially Chianti Classico, when done well, has that nice tangerine peel-like acidity that cuts right through the palate. 
I'm telling you right now. Yeah, just because I know them too, this is an excellent wine. If if you're finding this wine for 17 bucks, you're buying cases of it and throwing it in the cellar. Really beautiful stuff. Awesome wine. Next up, Fattoria della Iola. I have never tasted wines from this producer before, so I'm excited. 2018, mostly Sangiovese with some other varieties in it as well. The Montero Tondo was aged in oak. This was aged in some oak and stainless steel. Nice color. You can see my fingers through it. Brick, brick red. Let me know, do you really care about color and reds? I don't care that much. I wanna know, leave it in the comments below. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell so you know when new videos are coming out. 2018, a little bit younger, so maybe a little more fruit forward. This one smells a little bit riper than the Montero Tondo. This one has some black cherry type notes along with some cranberry and still some sour cherry in as well. A little bit of tobacco, just a faint hint of tobacco. But again, it has the zestiness, this kind of citrusiness that I love to have. To me, on the palate, the aola is exactly what a lot of people would expect in a Chianti Classico. There's enough plush fruit up front, but there's this nice earthiness, some fall leaves. You still have that acidity that goes right through. The tannins aren't really, really big. This is kind of like a crowd pleaser Chianti Classico, while I think the Montero Tondo adds just a touch more complexity. Delicious, easygoing wine. I think I've seen it also around 17 US dollars, maybe a little bit less in the in the US and, and around Europe. So I think at that price, it's a steal, especially if you want to drink good quality Sangiovese. Still good wine. I think I prefer the Montero Tono just a tad, but still really good wine. Next up is a famous producer, Riecine, also in Gaioli and Chianti. I visited this producer before beautiful vineyards. This is 2019, so brand new, aged in large oak casks. And this bad boy is 100% Sangiovese. This one is also a little bit more bigger, a little bit more dense. Not as much sour cherry in here. For me, this is baked strawberry, this is red cherry, but for this wine, there's a lot of tobacco in it. A lot of tobacco and a lot of those sweet cedar, sweet hickory type of notes. I don't know if you've ever been to a barbecue where you have that smoked hickory. That's the type of smell that I'm talking about. Mm, beautiful wine. I think I've seen this wine around 20, this is the most expensive out of the bunch. I see it around 25 bucks in the US. Now this is the biggest wine out of the bunch. Full and body at the tannins are nice and round, but there's plenty of fruit here. Another great thing about Chianti Classicos, they go great with pizza, any tomato-based pastas, which I'm gonna have these a little bit later with my dinner. This the acidity of Sangiovese goes with tomatoes so well. So which one's for you? I think the Riecine is for those that want a little bit more fruit, want something a little bit bigger. The Iola is a crowd pleaser. You're going to bring this to anybody. Almost anybody is going to like this style of wine. Nice balance between big fruit and some earthiness. Where the Montero Tondo has a little bit more earthiness than the other two. The way the wines are showing now, I'm going to have to taste through and uh, take my notes. I, I'm preferring right now the Montero Tondo just a little bit more than the other two, but I'll have to go through my notes and check. That's a cool thing about Chianti Classical. Like I said, amazing values to be had. I want to know, what are some of your favorite producers of Chianti Classico? Do you have any hidden gems that you want to reveal to me? Let me know in the comments below. Keep drinking adventurously, and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers! Hello, thanks for watching. Hey, you made it to the end. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell so you know when new videos are out. If you like content like this, check out our Patreon page where you get some behind-the-scenes exclusive content. Thanks for watching. Cheers! Cheers!